our first speaker, Dr. Angel Puente, will delve into the objectives of the Champion Project, which aims to increase the environmental and economic performance of targeted polymers. Uh, he will explain how sustainability assessment, uh, assessment is an essential ingredient for success. Angel, please. Thank you very much, uh, Sergio, for the introduction. Let me share my screen. Um, so I hope you are seeing the, the correct screen on presenter uh, models. Yes, oh. you are you are on the right screen. So yeah, thank you very much. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this, this series of, of um, champion webinars. As uh, Sergio was mentioning, uh, the Champion Project is a BBI new uh, research and innovation uh, action. And the main aim is to um, uh, produce uh, novel bio-based polymers uh, in order to replace conventional uh, polymers um, for their use in high-performance application. And the project was launched in, in June 2020 and is about to end uh, next year um, in May. And the idea of this webinar and, and, and also of this presentation is to discuss uh, all together the, the, the challenges of early stage assessment of sustainability. And also if we can say something about the absolute uh, sustainability. So there is, can we assure that we are developing in, in such a project new products that uh, do not cross any, any ecological boundaries? Um, so first of all, let me... Um, explain a bit overall the overall objective of the project. Um, so the main, the main aim is to develop and demonstrate novel bio-based polymers. We are using for that the uh, azamycle uh, chemistry. And in the end, these polymers need to have a high functionality. And this is one of the main uh, purposes. Uh, it's a functionality that cannot be met by the current fossil-based products. And we are trying to to yeah, to meet this functionality with novel bio base and also with uh, new polymer structures. So we are targeting different applications. We are tar uh, targeting um, home care products. Let me also include here the laser. Yeah, we are targeting home care products. We are also targeting coatings for automotive interior uh, surfaces. Uh, and we are also yeah for uh, structural adhesives coatings also for, for furniture. And we have four fundamental um, aspects that are at, at the core of a champion approach. The first uh, aspect is uh, the polymers need to be bio-based. Um, so the first is to synthesize uh, new polymers, uh, starting from bio-based building blocks using different types of, of uh, feedstocks. So here we are not limited to the type of feedstock, but we are uh, really evaluating different types of, of uh, chemistries and, and, and um, bio-based platforms. Uh, in second place, so all the materials are, are synthesized in the project must also pass through a toxicity screening. Um, so in other words, we have to be sure that all the, the new molecules that have been developed, they are safe uh, by design. Then after confirming that these are safe, and then they, they proceed in the, um, uh, in the project uh, through some um, 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 performance testing. Uh, so all these polymers are tested in, in different targeted applications, the ones uh, that I was mentioning. And these are, are tested uh, by the different industry uh, partners and users that we have in the, uh, in the project. And um, the last point, but also a very, a very important and crucial one is that in addition, all these new materials that we are developing, uh, they are also designed to be circular. So we have also to ensure in the project that uh, either there are um, recycling routes uh, possible for, for these new polymers or that uh, biodegradation can be also ensured for, for certain applications. So we have... Um, 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 overall, 14 European partners, we are working together in this project. This is the project is coordinated by the University of York, and we are covering the whole value chain. So from, from uh, the biomass acquisition 
and the synthesis of the monomers and the polymers scale up. Uh, then we are also doing some assessments on uh, LCA technoeconomic analysis. Um, then uh, we have uh, Scott Bader, Orineo, Unilever, uh, and Stal as end users that they are uh, testing the polymers for for their applications, and we also have uh, OWS who is testing. Uh, also end of life and biodegradation options for these polymers. And of course, also uh, um, um, we have also uh, SQ uh, supporting with communication and, and dissemination. So, okay, the project is targeting, we have said bio-based, non-toxic and circular polymers. However, now comes the question, can we confirm that just by, by, by targeting this type of, uh, of polymers, these are sustainable. So in this sense, the project has the following objectives towards sustainability. So first of all, we, we want to increase the environmental and economic performance of, of the targeted uh, polymers and by establishing an innovative and cost-effective uh, testing strategy um, uh, to evaluate toxicological safety issues uh, at first place, but then other also elements of uh, sustainability. We also want to increase the overall resource efficiency and reduce the greenhouse gas emissions uh, for the targeted applications uh, and also demonstrate uh, sound end-of-life options are possible for, for these polymers. And, and in general, we are evaluating so the overarching environmental, social, and economic uh, uh, sustainability for an industrial scale production processes. So we are uh, synthesizing in the lab the, uh, the polymers, but then we are also uh, scaling them up um, with the help of, of uh, the company VTT. And we are also, of course, benchmarking again uh, to conventional uh, um, uh, petrochemical materials or bio base, even if, if possible. So, okay. These are our objectives related to sustainability. Then how can we measure sustainability? So before measuring sustainability, we have to, to have a common understanding of uh, what sustainability is. And there are many definitions for sustainability. I want, maybe we will now navigate to the different um, possible uh, definitions. Uh, but I think one uh, very important definition is the one given by the United Nations uh, in 19... Uh, 83, and they they define sustainability development as the development that needs uh, that meets uh, and the need uh, of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own uh, needs. You are also very familiar with um, uh, the sustainability development goals that were also formulated by the United Nations in 2015, and these were designed to serve as a common blueprint uh, for peace and prosperity for 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 the people and for for the planet uh, also thinking about now but also thinking about uh, the future so once we have a common understanding of what a sustainable development is we can think now about okay so then how we measure it um, and this is particularly relevant for for early stage uh, development like like in this project because early uh, measurements of sustainability can help identify potential uh, environmental impacts and also find ways to mitigate them uh, at a very early stage when, when otherwise maybe uh, uh, later it will be too late. Um, so like, like this, we can, we can have processes and new materials that are inherently more environmentally friendly. We can also... Uh, Already during the design phase, we can reduce the the, the resource consumption, uh, and also we can reduce the waste generation. Um, however, measuring sustainability is, is also uh, not uh, not not easy. Uh, at an early stage, it also has different challenges due to several factors. For example, we know that at early stage we have always uh, limited data availability and sustainability and data, of course, is very linked. We have uh, high uncertainty, and there are always trades off uh, when, when dealing with sustainability, and especially in at the early stage when several aspects are not still set and, 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 and several aspects of the value chain are still not, uh, not, not fixed. And there are always trade, uh, trades uh, off, and one has to analyze. 
we can be good in one um, aspect, but we can be worse in, in the other aspect. Um, and we also have a bunch of many um, sustain sustainability metrics available. We have we can we can start from very simple stoichiometric metrics. You know, for example, the atom economy or the E factor that were were defined uh, long ago. Um, but we can go uh, to more complex uh, holistic uh, methods, like for example, uh, the LCI methodology. Um, for example, in the project we are we are using um, the LCA methodology throughout the project, um, together also with the techno-economic evaluations, and the idea is to to guide uh, the process development uh, in the so-called identification of hotspots, and, and and how can we implement changes in the project to to mitigate uh, some of the impact. We are also using the LCA and the techno-economic evaluation to provide some reference uh, points uh, for benchmarking against um, yeah, fossil or bio-based counterparts that we can identify for these new novel uh, polymers. And uh, also because in the project we are developing uh, a good number of, of polymers, we are also supporting with LC and TE, we are also supporting the selection of the most promising candidates. In our project, um, um, environmental aspects, measurement of the sustainability is very important, but we are also uh, aiming at circular products um, by design. This is also in, 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 the, in the title of, of, our, of our project. And for that, we also can, can have, can define several indicators uh, that can help us uh, measure the circularity. Um, here we have to be always uh, careful because circular products of and processes, of course, are often consider more sustainable compared to linear ones, primarily because they aim to reduce waste, to conserve resources, and to minimize environmental impacts. However, the sustainability of circular products and, and processes depends on various uh, factors and, and, and how they are implemented. So the, the, the efficiency, energy efficiency, uh, resource efficiency, the type of environmental impacts that we are uh, uh, analyzing. So not always circular means inherently uh, sustainable. Okay, so we have now LCA as a tool in the project. We also have techno-economic evaluation. We also have some metrics for circularity. Uh, so we already have a good bunch of, of indicators uh, of sustainability. Uh, we know that the LCA covers mostly the environmental aspects uh, of sustainability and the techno-economic uh, evaluation covers some of the economic aspects. Um, we can also define sustainability in a more uh, holistical way, and we can see the sustainability as a concept that uh, encompasses uh, three pillars, uh, so the environment, uh, the economy, and, and the society, uh, in a balanced uh, manner. So this is what we also know as the uh, triple bottom line. And you can see in this slide that different approaches for from simple metrics, like I was mentioning, atom economy, E factor, maybe just a carbon footprint, to, to more complex methods have been suggested, like the LCA or uh, life cycle costing. We also have social impact assessment um, still in development, but but, uh, but it is there. Um, or we even have some methods, uh, uh, like for example, those uh, covered here, that they also uh, try to assess uh, all uh, the dimensions of sustainability. One example of this um, overarching or broader sustainability um, criteria for, for bio-based products is, is set uh, laid out in the European norm 16751. So this is an European standard that sets uh, horizontal sustainability criteria for bio-based products and covers these three pillars of sustainability, the environment, the, the social and economic uh, aspects. Um, one limitation of this standard uh, targeting sustainability is that sets a framework for uh, to provide information on, on how to manage, uh, to manage uh, sustainability, but it cannot be used to make claims uh, that operations or products are sustainable uh, since it does not establish any type of threshold of limits. So it's very difficult to talk about an absolute sustainability. And this is another topic that I think is in, um, relevant when we are 
defining what sustainable uh, development is, and we have to talk about the absolute and the relative sustainability. So if, if you see, in fact, many sustainability assessments at, uh, yeah, at project level, process, design, etc., they assess sustainability always in comparison to benchmarks uh, or to reference points. Uh, that is, so the sustainability is compared always to, to, to that of a similar process or product. Um, it is always, or, or, or yeah, may, it's often always uh, possible or relatively easy to say that some products or services are more sustainable than others. For example, we can compare uh, commuting to work by bike is definitely more sustainable than commuting by car. So maybe this is a, a relative uh, analysis that we can easily uh, um, e evaluate. But most indicators of sustainability alone, they tell very little about sustainability. We also have to consider all together and always a deeper analysis is needed. Uh, we have to discuss things like, okay, uh, the, the application in which uh, and a new material is used is, is, is appropriate. Uh, what are the end of life considerations? Uh, how is also the market uh, um, behaving? Uh, are there any consequential aspect uh, that might also influence in the future uh, sustainability? Uh, are also conflict of interest of objectives? Uh, are there also trades off that uh, needs uh, need an analysis? So we also know that with so many indicators, uh, LCA and other sustainability uh, frameworks, they, they also offer what is called normalization and weighting. Um, this is a, a tool that can help um, put um, sustainability into a context. It also adds more uncertainty, but it's definitely a tool that, that can help. But now we have the question, can a product be sustainable at all? So now we are talking about absolute sustainability. What is our personal carbon budget, for example? Is a product good or just less bad? Can we measure then absolute sustainability? So this concept of uh, absolute sustainability is also related to the concept of strong sustainability. Mm, so this weak and, and, and strong sustainability are concepts uh, used in the field of sustainability to describe uh, different approaches. Uh, to manage uh, natural resources and also addressing environmental issues. Um, weak sustainability, for example, um, is a thinking um, uh, that is widely adopted in sustainable, sustainable development. And it suggests that natural resources can be replaced or substituted with other forms of capital, such as human-made or human capital. Uh, so in this view, it is possible to deplete certain natural resources as long as an equivalent amount of capital is created in, in some of their form. Um, in other words, um, it, it is giving priority, this uh, weak uh, sustainability, it is giving priority to economic growth and development over immediate environmental concerns. And this is so a, a technocentric um, view. And this could potentially lead to disregard the potential consequences of crossing critical ecological uh, boundaries. On the other hand, we have a strong sustainability, which uh, suggests that uh, there are ecological limits uh, to resource uh, use and that some natural resources are so critical to the functioning of ecosystems and human well-being that their depletion or degradation should be avoided at all costs. Um, so this perspective is emphasizing the need to protect and preserve ecosystems, biodiversity, on top of, of uh, economic growth. Um, and this is an ecocentric uh, vision of sustainability. Um, so the concept of planetary boundaries uh, is also very closely related to the idea of a strong sustainability. Um, so you might have heard about the planetary boundaries. Uh, the, so these were introduced by a group of uh, Earth system scientists in 29, and they identified a set of uh, nine critical Earth system processes or boundaries that, if crossed, uh, could lead to irreversible and, and abrupt uh, environmental changes, uh, also putting in, in danger the stability of the planet and, and, and the people. So. These planetary boundaries, they represent um, a, safe, a safe operating space for, for humanity, 
within which can we can continue to to thrive while also maintaining the the integrity of the of the earth uh, system the boundaries include parameters such as climate change biodiversity loss ocean acidification freshwater use etc and as i said crossing these boundaries will trigger some effects and tipping points that will result in potential catastrophic environmental destructions i will put it like this um for example this is very recent because in, in the, now in this month in september uh, so a team of of, of scientists um, they have uh, quantified for the first time all these nine uh, processes that um, regulate the stability and, and resilience of the earth and with the last update, uh, um, apart from not only from quantifying, they also have concluded that six of the nine boundaries have uh, been crossed. Uh, you can see here the evolution from, from in the moment in which uh, this um, framework was defined in 29 and yeah, and only in, 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 in less than 20 years, uh, you see what is the, 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 the sad evolution. So coming back to our question, um, can we measure sustainability at an early stage of development? And if so, can we say something about absolute sustainability? Can we make sure that we are not damaging the planet by um, yeah, um, synthesizing something new? So on one hand, we have um, LCA, for example, as a micro level tool, which is focusing on a specific product or process and it quantifies environmental impacts associated to a particular activity or product and allows also the comparison between alternatives. On the other hand, we also have the planetary boundaries uh, as a macro level concept that uh, considers uh, the overall state of the earth uh, system. So while LC and planetary boundaries, they, they serve different purposes and operate at different scales, they can complement each other, um, um, yeah, pushing towards sustainability. LCA can provide a detailed assessment of a specific uh, activities and the planetary boundaries can offer a global framework for understanding this uh, overarching environmental context in which these activities occur. So together they can inform more holistic and sustainable uh, decision making and, and policy development. Uh, but of course we have the questions, can we apply this analysis uh, and this link of LCA with uh, planetary boundaries to a project? Can we apply this at an early stage of development? Can we define safe thresholds per application or per sector? I'm not talking about uh, the whole uh, Earth system. So this will be part of the of the second uh, presentation from from my colleague uh, James Sherwood. And yeah, just with this slide, I, I wanted to to summarize a bit some takeaways uh, uh, of this first uh, introductory talk. So first of all, we need to consider sustainability during development. Otherwise, it will be too late. We know that sustainability assessments are multi-criteria analysis. Most indicators alone say little about sustainability. Always a deeper analysis is needed. So we have to put everything into the context of an application of, of, a, of a region, etc. cetera. Um, weak sustainability thinking is widely adopted in sustainable development. And this could potentially lead to disregard the potential consequences of crossing critical ecological boundaries because of the difficulty of assessing absolute sustainability. However, this evaluation of absolute sustainability is not a straightforward, um, especially for early stage uh, development. So in the next uh, presentation, you will learn more and apply uh, example. And thank you for your attention and happy to answer if there are some, some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angel. And uh, please, anyone can uh, um, 